Hey, everybody. Welcome to another webinar presented by Renzo. It's Chad Carden and Adam Carroll. We're here to talk through the framework for success today. Uh, it's a very interesting time that we're going through right now, and we want to make sure that you are empowering your people in the right way. And we're going to give you a very simple process to go through with them to get them engineered for success over the coming days, weeks, months, and years. So here is what we will talk about today. Uh, first of all, the two of us have been uh, in this industry, in the people business for the last 15 to 20 years. We've been doing work with organizations and we like to call, call ourselves architects of human capital, of environments and of outcomes. And if you smash all those things together, it's basically your corporate culture. And we believe that every single company out there needs to very intentionally create a culture that people love to come to work to. So in today's webinar, we're going to go through the framework for success, which really involves two things. It is the three-year letter, number one, and number two is a personalized action plan that goes along with that three-year letter. So Chad, I will pass it on to you. Perfect. Thanks, Adam. So I completely understand that sometimes the timing of this seems a little counterintuitive. I, I believe that a lot of people are just trying to Adam, before we start recording this, as we talked about, that people are just trying to get through the day sometimes, and people are just trying to figure out with this whole coronavirus, COVID-19, what is happening. Uh, but the argument becomes, how can we make sure that we're setting ourselves up for success when this is over? And I know that when is a huge question mark, but if you believe that this will eventually subside and that the world will get back to some sort of normalcy, it's important that we spend a little time now um, taking advantage of making sure that we're planning and being effective to be ready to go on the other side of this. And we're not suggesting that there's a time frame to it. It might be one minute a day, 10 minutes a day, one hour a week, whatever's right for you. However, we do believe that you have to carve out a little bit of time mentally to focus on what we're talking about, which is this framework for success. And what it really does is it helps us do a couple things. One is it helps us craft and create a vision for what do we want to walk into and what do we want to accomplish down the road? And then it also helps us get really practical and tactical on almost on a daily basis to figure out what are the activities that we need to do that will help us move in that right direction. So for example, if I want to, if my ultimate goal is to walk a mile, uh, what is the first thing that I need to do, which is take that first step. And that's what this framework for success does is it's really a, a holistic approach and it encompasses everything from the long-term all the way down to the short term to make sure we're moving in the right direction. So let's jump into this a little bit. Um, if you look at it, the first place we like to start is, is what we call the three-year letter. And why three years is because what we found is that most people will truly overestimate what they, what they can accomplish in one year, but we truly underestimate what we can accomplish in three years. So a lot of times when we put ourselves, when we give ourselves a one-year time frame, we almost overestimate and we're almost setting ourselves up for failure because we think we can accomplish these things. Adam and I have done a lot of ventures together. We've been part of a lot of ventures. We've coached people on a lot of ventures and consulted on a lot of ventures. And we typically realize that it takes three times as long, um, three times the amount of effort, three times the amount of money, whatever it is it might be to really get something launched. And that's why we like to look at this three-year time frame to really craft and look ahead as if it's three years in the future. And so when you write this three-year letter, a couple things to consider is one, um, what has happened? Not what do you want to happen, but what has happened as if it has already taken place? Think about before you craft this three-year letter of who you're writing it to. And it actually could be multiple parties. Some people decide to write it to themselves. Some people write it to their family. Some people write it to their uh, their team in a professional setting. And some people take, again, multifaceted approaches and look at maybe writing a couple different versions of the letter. But it's important to know who you're writing it to and who your audience is. It helps you get in that mental mind frame. And then what location you're writing it from. Again, I think that's important because it helps you settle in. It helps you really get your mind wrapped around um, and, 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 and engage in uh, the, this writing of the three-year letter. I also want to um, caution you that there might be several drafts of this. Some people maybe can do this in 30 minutes. For others, it might take 30 days. And so, and so just, you know, just be cautious and not trying to fast forward and speed it up 
make sure you're writing a three-year letter, again, that is right for you, that is a vision for your future, and that is something that you can, can see happening um, as you begin to uh, see it and, and watch it come to fruition. So a couple other things here um, is what have you accomplished? So what are the benefits that you receive from what have you accomplished? Uh, we always talk about, you know, the different buckets of accomplishments. So there's time freedom, there's money freedom, there's, um, there's relationship freedom, there's service freedom. Adam talks about the four legacies a lot. Uh, and so thinking about what are some of the things that you've accomplished in those areas of your life, you know, financially, what are you doing for service? How are you spending your time? And what other freedoms are you enjoying uh, as a result of you accomplishing this over three years? Uh, some things, sometimes it's important not to think about what you have built, but what you have discarded or what you've deleted. I think that uh, we always say that um, it's before you build the right habits, sometimes you have to break the wrong ones. So what have you removed in your life or obstacles that you removed that are headwinds, as we talk about, that have, that have allowed you to actually move toward and accomplish those things in three years? And then your impact on others. What we always believe that whatever we're doing has to be humanity plus, not humanity minus. And so what are you doing to add to humanity and what benefits is, uh, are you having for others as a result of you know, this, these three-year accomplishments? A couple other things as you, as you look at this is, um, again, some of the buckets are you know, your spiritual aspect. We're not here to define it for you or debate it, whatever that means for you, your mental aspect, your emotional aspect, controlling worry, stress, and fear, your physical Again, what, is, what does physical health mean to you and well-being? We're not here to define it, but it's something you need to think about. And then your financial aspect. We, we live in an economic world, and I know we're going through tough times right now and a little, little bit of an economic crisis, but ultimately the, the economic piece of this will not go away. It will always be here. And so you got to think about that as you're, as you're crafting this. Um, uh, assess your life progress and then anything else that's important to you. And again, I mentioned this before, but there could be many drafts of this. So be patient with it. But the key is, is this three-year letter becomes your masterpiece. It becomes your North Star. It becomes your anchor point. It allows you to make decisions in life that make it easier to say yes and easier to say no. If, if, if it's right and it's helping you move toward that three-year vision, it's easier to walk into. And if it's not helping you or if it's hurting you, it's easier to remove those things from life. When we're really clear about this, it's amazing how much we can accomplish. So that's the overview of the three-year letter. And then what happens is you walk into this personalized action plan. So let me high level walk you through this just a little bit and, and we'll discuss it in detail. So in your personalized action plan, now that we have our three-year letter and Adam, and I have done this, our teams do this. Uh, what we do now is, is we, we back into what are we doing today? What are we doing this week? What are we doing this month or this quarter that is moving us toward the three-year vision or our three-year letter? And so the personalized action plan is made up of really five different um, components. One is, what are our focus areas? And our focus areas are basically things that we really want to hone in on. What are we committed to doing uh, in this personalized action plan? What are our actions? What are our expected results? And what are our personal achievement? And I think that we have to tie into what's in it for us, not because we're selfish, but we do do things for selfish reasons. So I think it's important that we look at that aspect too of we have to be motivated by this personalized action plan to actually implement and put it into fruition. Adam, you wanna talk about focus areas a little bit? Certainly. So Chad hit the nail on the head. This, uh, the personalized action plan is about taking your three-year letter and then putting it into practice on a daily, weekly, monthly basis. So we're gonna break down the five areas that Chad just mentioned in a little bit more detail, starting with the focus areas. And the focus areas are, what are the top two to four things on your letter that could be worked on immediately? So if, as an example, your physical future is one of the things that's important for you, what, what are the two to four things you might do right away that you could begin to change that progress? Uh, it's all about deciding where you want to make intentional progress. So for some of you, that may be finances. And if financial freedom or security is on your list, then what are you going to do intentionally about that? Um, and those particular areas become the basis of your 30, 60, 90 day plan. As Chad briefly mentioned, people tend to overestimate what they can do in a year, but underestimate what they can do in three. And our way to get started on this process is to look at what can you do in the first 30 days, in the first 60 days, in 90 days, 
in 90 days time, imagine what you could accomplish if let's say running a half marathon was on your list, you could have almost your entire amount of training done for a half marathon in 90 days, but it requires that you get started right away with those very, very specific focus areas. And after that, I mean, it, then it comes down to those commitments. So once we have the, the focus areas, which again, in our personalized action plan are our anchor points, what are we gonna commit to? Because until we really commit to doing something, uh, action, tends to elude us. And so some of the, and again, the commitments are personal to you, but when you look at those focus areas, whatever those focus areas might be, and one of the things I didn't mention earlier is you, you look at this three-year letter, you can look at it from a personal standpoint, from a professional standpoint, or from a holistic standpoint. Again, there is no right or wrong as you craft this. So can you potentially commit to really committing to this and sharing it with somebody, sharing with, with a trusted partner? Adam and I share our three-year letters all the time. Our team share the three-year letters. We share our 90-day plans. Um, read your letter uh, at least weekly. I think that it's important that we stay, remember this is your masterpiece, this is your North Star, and it's important that we stay grounded because it's easy to get off course or it's easy for life to take over and we sort of forget about these things, but how do we center the needle and, and stay committed and stay connected to what it is we're trying to accomplish that again allows us to eliminate some of the noise that's not helping us move in that direction and to fill our activities with things that are movies moving us in that right direction and then remove obstacles that keep you from achieving it again there are a lot of things in our life that we need to delete habits we need to delete um maybe maybe it's people we need to delete but what are those obstacles that are not helping us get in that direction and we really once we get the folks there we really have to commit to those and then next is obviously action steps into those real quick chad the action steps are really about putting a time frame to when you're going to do things. So again, using some of these examples that we've brought up, if running a half marathon or if financial, or as Chad put it, getting rid of some of the maybe toxic relationships in your life, what is the time frame to actually making that happen? And trust us, we know this better than anyone, that having difficult conversations is one of those things that people will often put off for a very long time. And what we want you to do is, is get really intentional about when you're going to have uh, the conversation, when you're gonna start training for the marathon, when you're gonna start that savings plan, put a time frame to taking action right away. Then what we wanna do is we wanna determine how you're gonna track and measure that progress. So if the action step is to train for a half marathon, then we're gonna talk about uh, what is the path that you're going to take in order to train for it. There are six week, eight week, 12 week programs that you can start today or tomorrow in your quest to go out and complete a half. So we're gonna talk about how you'll track and measure progress. If it's financial, it's how much do you want to have in savings over a period of time? And are you tracking on that particular number? Um, the last question on actions is who else needs to be involved? So do you need a spouse? Do you need your, uh, your, your direct reports on board? Do you need your supervisor on board? Do you need the owner of the company to hold, help hold you accountable to whatever you're saying you want to accomplish in that three-year letter? The actions need not just be taken by you. We can enlist other people in the support of what we actually want to accomplish in a very short amount of time. But be very, very clear about this, that you can make plans, but if you make plans and you take no action, nothing will happen. So what we really want to do is we want to focus on, we have this great vision for where we want to go, but we must constantly be putting one foot in front of the other to get there. Um, Chad has this great saying all the time that lots of people are in rocking chair mode. There's a lot of movement. It's all back and forth. There's no forward momentum. So the action step in this plan is all about taking necessary intentional action step by step to move you forward. So once we have focus areas, we have commitments, and now we're committed to action. And, and I always think about action of, is, as who does what by when. That really helps me define an action step that is measurable for me. We also need to define what are our expected results. What do we really expect to happen? Again, there's a measurement there of when and how, you know, how are we going to measure it? How are we going to hold ourselves accountable or how are we going to get others you know, who needs to be involved? How are we going to others to help us with that accountability? And then be specific. What are, if it's financial, is there a number that you want in the bank? If there's, if, if it's running that half marathon, 
you know, what is the date? Setting the date, knowing that there will be a day where you'll have to go 13.1 um, in, a, in a formalized half marathon, whatever that might be, be really be sp specific with your expected outcomes. Because when you hit those expected outcomes, you should celebrate. You should celebrate the little successes along the way because little successes add to big, up to big successes. And again, remember, everything we're doing in this personalized action plan is leading us toward ultimately our three-year letter or our three-year vision. I'm sitting here in Missouri right now and I'm right in the middle of the state. So if I get on 70 and my ultimate goal is to get to St. Louis, I could be on the right road. But I, if, I'm going, if I'm headed west, I'm going the wrong direction. So this personalized action plan helps us make sure and keeps us on track that is moving us to the ultimate goal that we want to accomplish. And again, allowing us to assess it along the way to make sure we're making progress and we're actually moving towards it and not you know, creating barriers or creating headwinds that's allowing us to potentially even move further away from it as we go. I think in addition to this, Chad, there's one thing that I want to add, and that is that if you have really high intention of what that vision is, you hold really high intention. Like, I know I'm going to accomplish this. Your belief level is high. Um, everything that you're doing action or, is action-oriented towards achieving that thing. But I also want to make sure that your attachment level to whatever it is you're doing is relatively low. Some people will, will just come down on themselves if they don't run the extra two miles this week. And what we want you to do is just reread the three-year letter, go back to your expected results, go back to the action steps you can take, and be very specific with those expected outcomes. Just don't beat yourself up in the process. The goal is you want to focus on your personal achievements. And Chad and I do this all the time with our teams, and we do it with each other throughout the week. What do we feel good about this week? What did we do? What can we pat ourselves on the back for and thump our chest about. So what are your personal benefits when things improve? If you're getting healthier, what does that mean for you uh, long-term? What does it mean for your family? How will it impact others directly or indirectly? And last, and this is a big one, what satisfaction will you derive from this? Do you know if you just sat at home and you smiled all the time, parts of your brain will fire that will make you feel better. So when we start talking about goal setting and visioning, we actually want to put people in that moment and allow them to feel the satisfaction of having already achieved whatever it is they've set out to achieve so that they can just flood their body with endorphins um, and feel good about the satisfaction they're going to derive from achieving what it, whatever it is they've set out to achieve. Chad, anything to add on personal achievement? Yeah, I, and I think you, you hit it um specifically is that it it almost it's helping us create the emotion as if as as if it's already taken place and it helps us live into that vision lakiani talks about really quick before we i know we're starting to wrap up here adam but vision lakiani talks about there's really four mental states that we, that we're in he said the first one is is we're not happy with our current uh position and we have no vision for the future that's a negative spiral mentally that's depression candidly the next one is, is we're currently happy with where we're at, but we have no vision for the future. And that's what he defines as the current reality trap, meaning that if we're currently happy, that, that happiness will eventually wane because we have, we're not living into something next and our future will continue. As you mentioned, Adam, we're always growing, right? We're always developing. It's a constant. It's something that is just there in our life. And so we have to begin to craft it. The next one is, is where we're not currently happy, but we have a vision for the future. And, and Adam, you mentioned about low attachment, which I think is so powerful because a lot of times when I'm not currently happy, but I have a vision for the future, I tie my happiness to when that happens. So when I get that promotion or when I make that amount of money or when I want, win that race or when I do those things, and I'm always chasing happiness. And so that causes stress and anxiety because I'm not currently happy and I'm always waiting for the next thing. And what you typically find, I've been in that, in that situation before, is when I reach that point, then there's something else I'm going after, and I never am able to really enjoy it. And the last piece is what he calls flow, which is what you were talking about, which is where I'm currently happy with what I'm doing, but I also have a vision for the future. But my vision is not tied, or my happiness, excuse me, is not tied necessarily to that vision. I'm happy now, but I'm always striving for better things. And that really is the essence of what we're trying to accomplish with this, mm. um, with this three-year letter and this, this framework for success. The last thing I'll say, and I'll let you wrap it up is, I understand that some of you are watching this, and again, the timing might not be perfect. However, challenge yourself. Challenge yourself to not get mired into everything that's happening right now and do some preparation and do some planning 
that will allow you to set yourself up for success when all of this subsides. Again, I think it will help you later, but I also think it'll help you now because it allows you to get in the right mental mind, sort of mindset, if you will, that will allow you to continuously be productive in everything that we're dealing with at the current times. No doubt. Well said, Chad. Um, there is a saying that says, hope is the feeling you've got, that the feeling you've got isn't permanent. And what we want to do is we want to give people hope that, that we will get through this. There is no question. As a country, as a society, as a world, we've come through much more challenging things than what we're going through right now. Yes, this is odd. Yes, it's unprecedented. But we have gone through things that are much, much worse. And we will come through on the other side. Our goal for you not just you personally, but you as a leader, you with your teams, is to help guide them through this process. And to do that, we've created a very simple free resource, a tool that you can use with your team, your family, you can use it personally. It involves the framework for success, the three or letter format, as well as a personalized action plan. And we have both your 90 day plan, 60 day, 30 day, that is all downloadable for you. And we say you should do this uh, yourself first so you know what it's like to go through it. Then what we'd like you to do is put your team through it. And the reason we want you to put your teams through it is right now, more than anything, your team needs to see what two years or three years from now looks like. And they need to be creative and they need to leverage their imagination and see that this is a short-term event. It, it Honestly, I think you and I talked about this yesterday, Chad. Didn't it feel like March was a year long? Yeah, it felt like a year long. And now uh, we're looking at, you know, it could be four to six weeks. But once we're beyond this, there is light on the other side of this tunnel. And we want to have a very clear vision for what the other side of this tunnel looks like. That's what this process is all about. So in review here, the framework for success involves writing a three year letter that's getting very specific about what you uh, want. Uh, from the next three years, you are writing it from a place of already having it. So I want you to write it in the past tense. Uh, this is what I have currently, or this is what has, has happened. And it is as if you are sitting in three years into the future. Um, write it from a very particular place. Know who you're writing it to and get very specific in the detail. And then it's about reviewing that three-year letter and applying a personalized action plan to it. 30, 60, 90 day benchmarks of what are the action steps, defining what success looks like, um, and, and obviously enlisting other people in that. The way that you uh, receive this download is by going to renzoexperience.com forward slash framework. And at that URL, all we ask is that we get a first name and an email address. We just like to know how many people are downloading the framework itself. And it's our way of building a list of people who are really interested in what we're doing. What we're doing is we're helping companies create cultures that work. We're helping people create cultures at home with their family that work, that they love to go home to and they love to go to work to. And so we would love for you to be a part of the Renzo family and join in the Renzo experience. Uh, Chad, any final thoughts? I would just say, but my last final thought is Adam, Adam and I have done this exercise within our clients numerous times and it is, and we've done it, we do it with ourselves and we do it with our own organization. It is powerful. So if you win and you do it with your team and if you're going to run the, run it uh, yourself, um, have your team, what's even more powerful is when your team actually shares their three-year letter with others. Uh, it just, it, it just creates that reality. And if you have a big team, you can split up people into triads or whatever you want to do or groups of two or whatever makes sense. But some, some, there's just something magical about sharing it. It really cements it and it's powerful and it creates a commitment level that we find is beneficial to actually seeing these things come to fruition. So thanks. I appreciate the opportunity. Thanks for uh, putting this together, AC. Absolutely. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Again, uh, this was presented by Renzo. You can find us at Renzo Experience and get the framework at renzoexperience.com forward slash framework. Uh, be well, be safe, stay sane. We'll see you in the next one.